Well today guys, we're going to be checking out the biggest mistake you're making when you're mixing a song and how to fix it. Let's get into it. So what's going on guys, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Today is a tutorial video and is a tutorial video on how to mix. Now we all know there's a million and one ways to mix, right? But this is the one mistake that I was making and that I see a lot of other people make when they're mixing songs and how to fix it. This mistake is absolutely killing your workflow and it's killing your overall mix. And that is the solo button. <laughs> The solo button, for those of you who do not know, is the button that you can push on a certain track, like an individual track or a certain bus, to where it isolates that portion of the song and that's the only thing you hear for that portion of time. So the huge mistake that I see people doing is they engage the solo button and then start to mix individual pieces of their track and then disengage it and then think everything's good to go. Just because something sounds good in solo does not mean it will enhance the song and it doesn't mean that it fits in the context of the song. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a project from a track that I worked on about two months ago, and then I'm gonna isolate the guitars. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the guitars in solo, get a nice sounding solo guitar sound, and then put it back into the overall song, and then see how it sounds. I guarantee you, it will not sound, it will not, it will not fit, all right? So without further ado, Let's get into it. So this track is called Reverie. It's a song of my third Luna Muerta EP, uh, Recollection, and it has live drums. Josh Orlando is actually the drummer of one of my professors. Wait. Josh Orlando is the drummer of my professor's band. My professor's a keyboard player. Josh is, an, is a phenomenal drummer. Oh my god. is amazing. Um, he was f awesome enough to help me out with this track. And um, yeah, so here's the final product. So, as you can hear, Josh is an amazing player. He took my MIDI drums and turned that into like a dances to a discordant system kind of like variant. And it's amazing. He did that all by himself just with my guitars. So I sent him the guitars, all right? So here are the guitars by themselves in the final, final stage, if you will, of this project. So Bias Effects is doing the majority of the work um, off of a patch that I got from the, the Tone Cloud, I think it's called. And then Tosh, Tone Forge Guilty Pleasure is doing like the enhancements or whatever. So there's quad track guitars, Bias Effects is doing the legwork, and then Tone Forge is filling out the rest, creating a huge, awesome sound that I absolutely love. All right, so nothing is on the actual tracks. Everything that I did was on the bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn everything off. Cause, and then I'm gonna try to mix them all in solo and then throw them back into the track, all right? So I'm gonna do my very honest, you know, try here to make it sound good in solo and we'll see what happens. So right away I hear a lot of uh, high end that I don't want and um, so I'm gonna alter that real quick. So I just started to clip on my bus already, so I gotta, I gotta turn down the drive and uh, a little bit of the thickness as well.
have a tone right now that I think sounds pretty good. I mean, I, I try to do this as quick as possible, and um, just to like dial up something that sounds good, um, you know, quick and easy, but also doing it all in solo without any reference to the bass or the drums. So I'm gonna listen to another part of the track real quick. So now, now when the leads come in, now it just sounds like it's, it's a little too loud for me in solo. Again, I'm guessing. All right, I'm gonna run with this just for time's sake. It sounds like um, it sounds good to me, and I have a lot of gain reduction with the overall compression uh, with the Joel Wanasek BG guitars. Um, I have all my chain, you know, as I as I would uh, for this track. I have virtual mix rack, uh, the Osis EQ, uh, C4 by Waves, and then Joel Wanasek guitars. So now I'm gonna hit the solo button, and we're gonna play the track and see how it sounds. You can't even hear the guitars. The guitars are gone. So now I have to go back into the bus and mix it in, in not in solo with the entirety of the track. So like now what's starting to happen here for for the sake of this video and in real real life like no joke what's happening is I'm suffering from ear fatigue. I'm starting to already like lose sight of the original intent of what I wanted it to sound like in the beginning. And so that's something that's huge when you're mixing is you want to make sure you have you want to, what what I like to do is I like to knock knock things out as fast as possible, man. That way, that way I'm not second guessing myself and I'm not suffering from ear fatigue and I'm not losing again the original intent of what I wanted to create. When you're sitting here and just listening to something on loop and you're trying to mix it and make it sound good, you're literally physically suffering from ear fatigue and then you like start to like almost hear things that aren't there. I've said this before in a couple other videos, but you want to get it done as fast and quick as possible and then when you feel like you're suffering from ear fatigue and you don't really have a reference at point anymore, you take a break. So my point is, you're wasting all this time in solo, mixing in solo, and then you don't, you, you don't have a real grasp on, on the, uh, the overall track. Yeah, it might sound good in solo, but you're not going to post that song or you're not going to release that song with the guitars in solo or the drums in solo or the bass in solo or the vocals in solo. You're going to release it as a full-on project, right? So the fact is, if you're not mixing with everything playing at once, you're wasting time, you're wasting energy, and you're losing sight of what you want to create. So the biggest mistake anybody can make, from my opinion, when mixing is using that damn solo button. But lucky for all of us here, the easiest way to fix that is you just don't use the solo button, right? You mix with everything going together at once, everything as a final project, you can either start top down, meaning you can start on the master fader, stereo out, master bus, whatever you want to call it, and then work backwards. But what I like to do is I like to do track by track and then go back as like fine tuning. It's just my style, but I'm still mixing, you know, with everything playing at once, not in solo. So again, to recap guys, don't mix in solo, mix with everything playing at once and you'll save workflow and you'll have a better grasp on your track and your creation and you won't lose sight of what you want your final product to sound like. All right, boys. So if you found it educational, informational, and you want to share it, that'd be amazing, guys. Help spread the word. Thank you so much for sticking around to end this video. If you're brand new and you want to join my friends and family on my channel, please hit that subscribe button. It'd mean the world to me. All right, my dudes. I am out of here. Stay metal, and I'll see you guys next time.